this program or whatever you do, wherever you do it. And some things that where I pastor it, I'm, I'm like, okay, I get to learn how to work with your people. But you need to try to help them, whatever you do. I always throw this in there, how this can lead people to Christ. I throw it in there. Every chance they come to me, how's it able to lead them to Christ? You know? I know y'all come good and faithful and do your rehearsal because y'all got an anniversary, but what about after the anniversary? Y'all, If y'all want to have a concert, just say y'all run a building and go have a concert. But what if you do here, it should be leading people to Christ. You should expect that unsaved folks are going to come and that you are ready to minister to their heart to give them hope in the midst of their holiness. Yes, ma'am. What I like about this so much, Paul didn't give up. They went back and carried the word again. The, uh, when the city they run them out anyway, they went back again, carrying the word of God to all believers. Well, yeah. Well, they actually they fled to another to another place. Each time they got persecuted here, they go to another city. They didn't stop with the word of God. They kept on, and, and, and wherever they went, God gave them favor with a group of people. But guess what? You still had that hater still trying to follow behind you. Okay, but but when when they, when they got to the point, the least they said, when, when, before we leave from the city, y'all gonna know something about our Savior. Mm -hmm. See, right, and that's that's what they were doing. They kept on moving. Mm -hmm. But but the thing I want you to look at the, the twenty the twenty first and the twenty second verse when they returned back to uh, to the Jerusalem, I mean to Antioch and uh, Lystra and Iconium and Antioch, they confirming the twenty second verse confirming the souls. Now, 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 look at this right here. Of the disciple. Now, the word here is souls. What that word soul means? Huh? Their mind and their hearts. Their minds and their hearts? Okay. Their faith. Because it was many, I guess. Okay, many. So that's referring to people. Okay. The spirit. S what? Spirit. Spirit. Okay. Confirming the soul of the disciples. Disciples are the people, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And exhorted them to uh, continue in the what? Faith. Faith. Mm -hmm. And that we must, through much tribulation, Enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Listen, they confirming the word confirming. Look, look, look what the word confirming here means here. They're scripting the people. They're confirming and they were encouraging them. Mm -hmm. Brother, I know, I know, yeah, you, you, you you're saved. Mm -hmm. now, I know you've got some struggles and you still bound with some stuff of your past. But look here, let me let you know, you, you, you still new in Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and as you grow, and we're gonna make sure because we're gonna be here with you. Want to keep a check up on you? Oh, everybody came to you. Five folks got saved Sunday. And you ever want to? Oh, they got saved. Okay. Well, are you nurturing them? Are you teaching them? Are you developing them? Are you still being there with them, walking with them? Because see, they just got saved. All that they just did, they just surrendered. But now they need to learn how to walk in this thing of called salvation. They didn't know how to apply and know how to conduct themselves in this new life. This new commitment they made. How would they know unless I have a teacher? Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that we read about that? Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the, the eunuch mm -hmm. and Philip mm -hmm. asked the question. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what you're reading? Mm -hmm. I'm reading. I did what I'm supposed to do. But, but how do I know what to do after this mm -hmm. if you are going to abandon me? Yeah. I know you got your other program coming next week and this week and that week. I'm lost in the midst of y'all religious act world. You got to show me how to live this thing. Well, Pastor, I got a slight question, a question on that topic there. If someone, you know, you lead someone to Christ and and they don't have that type, that hunger, how do we fix that situation? Well, the point about it, if you led them to Christ, they have some kind of desire that God opened up a door, they accept the Christ. Mm -hmm. My thing is to get some information from that person or either if you know someone in that community, that area, that can help you to work with that individual, <coughs> share that information, ask that person, is okay if I uh, call this brother or this sister up 
and let them be able to talk with you as well if you can't reach me. Mm -hmm. okay. See, but but just get them saved, and then they, if if if, if they was whatever their issue was, because they got saved, that issue still gonna knock on the door, yeah. and they're gonna need somebody mm -hmm. there. That's what you currently kind of Bible study, and oh, I say Sunday school too, because if you don't come to sound listen word at all, what you gonna do? Because now I can read my Bible, I understand some of it. Mm -hmm. I can understand all of it. Right. So I'm gonna come to Bible study where I can get more understand, ask you questions. Right. You know? But now, but now this is setting. I'm going to. I'm going to a different level. That's when a person is really, uh, you got them there that they like, mm, yeah, I, 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 I believe in this right here that. But this person's got saved. They ain't never been in church their life. Mm -hmm. They ain't going to come to Bible study. The Bible study got to come to them. Oh, yeah. See, we got to go to them. Yeah. And as they develop and they start trusting us and they start saying, even though when they have fall, and then we show them, hey, we're going to help to get you back up and let you know, hey, you can do this, you can do that. Now, I can tell you the countless the, the houses that I had to go in to get people out. They, they, I mean, struggling. And, and all when this born again believers, some was was ministers. And I said, I said, I said, that's my brother. Now I, I got to go and get him. And I, I said, man, come on. And I had to take him. One guy, I mean, very gifted and everything, played and all the good. I went and got a, a hotel room for him, and had to go in there and put him in the room. He was so messed up and everything. Put him in there, and then I got up early that next morning to go back over there to make sure that he was all right. And take him out and fed him and everything, and then we just talked. See, going beyond the call of duty. You see what I'm saying? And because when, when, when the enemy is doing a tug of war, it, it may cease when a brother or sister come around, but when you leave, that thing will flare back up. And see, we got to make this thing practical. We What we do, we want to get the person saved, and, and, and then from salvation, we want them to just hope for heaven. But look at that big gap in between that. Yes, yes. We killing them. Yes. We got to give them some steps. Yeah. And as they take the steps and fall and everything, they got a step to fall along. They don't have to fall all the way back down. And coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. And so that as they are climbing the steps, they building themselves to where they need to be at in God. Are you with me now? But see, we want all the people, we, we have the religious mind of getting the folks come here and come there, but where we got to bring them to, why we can't go to them. And see, if you notice what we're reading here, it's nowhere that Paul and Barnabas told them to come to a prayer meeting. The scripture said they went to the city. They went to them. And they were they were acting like Christ was. They were willing to sacrifice of themselves. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice themselves, sacrifice their own time for the kingdom of God. And see the key point is who really need the Bible study is we who are said of the faith so that we can be what read up and get equipped so we can go out. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even gonna ask y'all when last time you went out. I'm not, I'm not even gonna ask that question. I'm just letting you know how you think you're talking about packing pews. Don't you know we all had those? We, uh, you know, I, I'm, yeah, we had those packing pews programs. You know who you be packing them up with? Folk from another church. Family members. Now, if you really want to know what packing pew shit means, you go out there and pack with folks that don't go to church mm -hmm. and minister to them. Amen. New converts. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not a convert yet, but they still got an issue, but you're going to love on them where they are. And you're going to dress them in there. You're going to embrace them. And guess what? And the folk that you have coming there, those people that you have coming for your pack of pew, they ain't going to leave you nothing but $10. And you spend more money having a program than going out there and reaching the loss at any cost and letting them know that God still loves you in spite of your shortcoming, in spite of what you have done, in spite of how many times you have failed. God loves you. How do I know he loves you? Because look at me. Your life itself is a testimony. Amen. And when you can let a person know that, I don't care how I look on the outside, but baby, sometimes I have good days. And sometimes I have bad days. But guess what? I would not complain. Why? Because God been good to me. More than his own mean word can be. And so we ought to show people, know how to show them that in the midst of our troubling times, uh, we still say thank you. In the midst when we don't know what to do, we still say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. In the midst when we don't have enough to do what we need to do, we just say, I trust in the Lord. Yes, yes. 
See, see, these are things that the world is on the outside looking on the inside how we are demonstrating how we love the Lord. They're not saying they love the Lord. We don't want to say that. Come on now, yeah. And we got so much distraction among us that we can't get connected to the God that we say is in us. Glory. Come on now. My Lord. I'm not, I'm not too Lord. heavy with y'all tonight, Adam. <laughs> but, but once again, I want you to understand the text here. That in the uh, the twenty second verse here, we find in the fourteen chapter that the apostle Paul and Barnabas they going out through the city teaching, preaching the gospel. Jesus, if you're going out there preaching, you ain't gonna be going out on the corner with folks selling drugs, telling them they going to hell. That's not the gospel. You go out there and give them hope and let them know that look here, God have a work for you to do. Jesus can take things and, and he can turn it around. You go out there to encourage the people. You go out there talking about they going to hell. They say, okay, I'm going to give you a 350 sale. I mean, yo, help me somebody. Some people do that. That's right. Right. That's right. Or either you come in there with your billing fund sheet and you want they, you, you, you talking about they going to hell for selling drugs, but you want their drug money. <laughs> help me help somebody. All right. All right. See, 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 see we, we become hypocritical. We want to die on the people, but we want what they have. Come on now. Mercy. Mercy. If they're not good enough for the kingdom of God, God don't want what they have. He wants their soul. He wants yes. them. Yes, yes, yes. And the reason why a lot of folks are still out there is because we're not where we need to be ourselves. Yes, can I tell you this? Sure. I went to a church one night and we had a revival. I, I think about that a lot, you know. This man come out the street, come in the church, and lay two dollars on the table. He just looking around, just looking around. That man was asking for help. You know the preacher got up and walked out, dismissed and walked out. Mm. I thought that was all this thing I ever saw in my life. He went in there and put two dollars. He's coming in, put two dollars on the table, looking at the preachers. They wasn't if I even and just looking around and and and, 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 and like he wanted help. They walked, the preachers went on out the door, said a bit of this and went on out the door. And that's the reason why wherever I go, I tell the people, no matter me, because I'm the pastor, mm -hmm. but when God lays something in your heart to do, you obey God. That's what I'm that's saying. Right. You obey God. Because see, a lot of things, now I'm going to be honest with you, we waiting on the pastor to do everything, mm -hmm. but what God has placed in you to do. That's it. That's right. We want the pastor to build the church up and everything, but guess what? We come and we go. You still there. Mm -hmm. So if you let a pastor come and tear it down, blame yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now it, it shouldn't be that way, but blame yourself. Because mm -hmm. before anything go down, they give you warning. But guess what? Before you have a fire, you have smoke. That's right. And if you don't take time to try to find where the smoke comes from, eventually when you do find out, it's too late. Mm -hmm. But you know how to stop the pastor should stop and maybe... Let, you know, some of the deacons or something tell them to talk with me. Some, you know, okay. that's what I was just feeling like that some of the deacons, somebody yeah. should have talked with me. Yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but look, let's go back with uh, Rhoda. When pre Peter was uh, uh, in jail, they, they was uh, the saints. It was the believers. They prayed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the titles. Mm -hmm. So if you're a believer, you, you don't wait on Come see, cause you didn't, see, one thing about it, you never know what, what I'm going through. And, I, and if, if I'm disconnected, because I'm a pastor, I can be going through some stuff. I, I, I can't come here trying to minister, minister Charles. Mm -hmm. But you can be somewhere in place, you can minister to. Mm -hmm. See, God don't look at titles. He just look at where you are the, uh, to be a servant, to do the work. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, uh, Pastor White, I was thinking about what Brother Charles said. Uh, but sometimes uh, when... You minister to people and they accept Christ. And sometimes you get to the point, that's all they want because that's all they've ever heard. You just accept Christ in your life and that's all you need. Mm -hmm. You know, get to that point. Mm -hmm. And then they don't want anything else. Because mm -hmm. you come to now to say, well, I'm saved. Well, you know, why you don't come on fellowship with somebody? Go to church somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm saved. I don't have to go to church. Mm -hmm. I accepted yeah. Christ. I don't have to go to church. Not you know? Man. So mm -hmm. I'm like, Brother Charles, how do you reach people that have gotten that in their heads that they don't need to get any more other than salvation? Right. 
it goes back to what Sister Dawkins said earlier. Because sometimes our approach is too religious. Mm. And we put bars and standards on them that we really can't hold ourselves. Instead of just sharing with them the way of salvation. And show them salvation through by love and sharing them the word of God. If that person likes football, and this godly wisdom, you know, uh, find how you can connect what they say about football and get them interested in the word of God through football. 